Masa Tabarodi as well. I'm so excited. Apostle Rodrigo, it is good to see you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining in. Right, like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. Praise God. We just want to get straight into the word. Praise God. As you are joining in, just kindly share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we, we are live and let them know that life is flowing through the airwaves. Parsi Bharadia Sujala Mahandereboshia. Let's open our Bibles to the book of James. I hope you've got your notepads, uh, notebooks. I'll be giving quite a lot of scripture. Uh, like I always say, it is healthy for your spirit. It is healthy for your spirit. Praise God forevermore. James chapter number 1, verse number 22. Praise God. Let's get straight into it. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we declare that this word will transform our lives. Our lives can never remain the same. We thank you, Lord, because we are what the word says we are. We can do what the word says we can do. And indeed, we have what the word says we have. Glory to God forevermore. James chapter number 1, verse 22, praise God. Verse 22, James 1, verse 22, praise God. The Bible says, be but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Mm. Yeah, there's one thing that I want you to understand as we are going to go through this. I'm going to be teaching, preaching, and ministering at the same time. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I want you to understand that, that you are deceiving yourself. Not that somebody is deceiving you, but you are deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. He looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like, not what he is. What he was like, praise God, what he was like. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. The key word that I want you to pay attention to right there is, that word deceiving yourselves that word deceiving yourselves is the same as acting beside yourself so he says do not deceive yourselves by acting beside yourself for example i'll give an example um you are on a set in a movie um and then you are acting as somebody that is um i don't know for example i don't know multi-millionaire with houses properties whatever you name it you are acting in a set in a movie but after the movie has finished you go back to where you were before back to square one so when the bible says be hearers be doers of the word not just hearers you are deceiving yourselves meaning you are acting besides yourself so acting what you are not so you are acting what you are not okay so deceiving yourself is acting what you are not. I want us to look at the pretext for us to understand the context. Praise God. So let's look at the pretext. Let's go to uh, verse 18 of the same book. James chapter 1 verse number 18. The pretext. All right. Uh, verse 18. The Bible says of his own of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures meaning we have been begotten by the word he gave birth to us by the word i want you to understand this because the foundation if you if the foundation is not laid properly the building the structure will not stand when winds come that structure will not stand so it is very important that you understand the foundation of where i'm coming from so that when winds come your building your structure can hold can stand i look at these guys when they are building you'd they would cover everything and they'll be there for like months and you'll be like hey these guys are wasting time They've been here for like time. Nothing seems to be working. Guess what? What they are doing is they are building the foundation first. It is after when the foundation has been set in place, has been built. That's when you begin to see the building just going up. You're thinking, wow, these guys are quick. But they spend time making sure that the foundation 
was in order. So it's the same thing. Just stay with me as I'm building a foundation right now. It will be, it will come handy. So James chapter number one, 18, the Bible is saying that of his own will, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Always pay attention to the words. He brought us forth of his own will that we may be a kind of his first fruits. That means when the Bible then says in Corinthians that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now he is telling us that he begot us. We were given birth. Through the word of truth, that we may be a kind of his first fruits. Gave birth through the word, meaning the word of God is our nature because we were given birth by the word of God. So the word of God is our nature. So we ought to be doers of the word. If not, you have deceived yourselves. How have you deceived yourselves? Your nature is the word of God and you are born of the word of God. So when, when you are deceiving yourself is you are acting what you are not. Look at 1 Peter, praise God. Look at 1 Peter, we're laying a foundation here. In a few minutes we'll be flying. Look at 1 Peter chapter number 1 verse 23, praise God. 1 Peter chapter number 1 verse 23, 1 Peter Chapter 1, verse 23. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, you have been born again, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. So we have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed. Through the living and enduring word of God. Are you still here with me? So it is very important to confess. It is very important to confess the word of God. Why? Because God gave birth to you via his word. You are born again. You are born of the word. So it is important that we, we acknowledge the word. It is important that we... We confess the word because the word of God is our nature. That's who we are. Okay. So when, when we don't do the word, when we don't do the word, we are deceiving ourselves. When we don't act upon the word, when we are just, the Bible says, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers. So if we don't do the word of God, we are deceiving ourselves. Acting what we are not. Look at James. Uh, look at James again. James 1.23. I want you to see something. James 1.23. It says what? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. He looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty... And preserves, be no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. Ye will be blessed in his doings. My God. The word of God is our mirror. The word of God is our mirror. It shows us who we are. That's why the title is The Mirror. Who? Kayabata, my God. What do you see? The word of God is our mirror. What do you see? So the word is our mirror. It shows us who we are. James calls, James calls it the law of perfect liberty. Right. Remember, the word of God is not all scriptures. I'm about to say something that will confuse your theology right now. Yeah? I'm about to say something that will confuse your theology. You'll be like, what? Yes. The, the word of God is not all scriptures concerning your mirror. 
Okay, for example, you hear people saying, I want to dance like David danced. Oh, let's dance like David danced. Let's dance like that. David is not our mirror. Why do I say that? Look at Hebrews. Hebrews, I'm building a foundation here. Hebrews 11, verse 39. In a few minutes, we will be flying. Hebrews, 39, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 39. Hebrews 11, verse 39. Praise God. Hebrews 11, 39. The Bible says, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. We are talking about by faith. They did this by faith. They received this by faith. They did this. But now look at 39 of the same chapter of Hebrews. Remember I taught about Hebrews 11 that that is not, that is not the description of faith, but it is just, uh, that is, it's, it's just a description of the Old Testament faith. It's not our definition of faith. But now look at Hebrews 11, 39 says, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. So Abraham, Jacob, David, all of those guys, they did not receive the promise. Since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So they can never be made perfect without us. They did not receive the promise. Why? Look at verse 40. Since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Oh, God. Meaning, you cannot be better. You cannot have better things by looking at Elijah. You cannot have better things by looking at Elijah. That's why many people, they are still calling the God of Elijah. I call upon the God of Elijah, the God of fire. Elijah is not our model. You can't be in a place calling the God of fire. Fire for what? Was it not Jesus rebuking James and John when they said, Lord, should we command fire? And then Jesus said, what manner of spirit is that? So Elijah, Elisha, they are not our models. David is not our model. So I can't be calling the God of fire. There's no such thing as the God of fire. The fire that is mentioned in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it is for those that reject the gospel. It is for those that will reject the gospel. It is not for now. Now is not the time for judgment. Now is the time for salvation. So the fire that has been mentioned, you hear people say, I call upon the God of fire. There's no such thing as that. Those are doctrines of men. This is not the year of fire. This is the year of salvation. So you can't be calling fire, say the God of Elijah. I call upon the... Elijah is not our model. Elisha is not our model. David is not our model. Abraham is not our model. So you look away from them and then you look unto Christ who is our model. All of them, they are not our mirror. So I don't look at Elijah and say, I want to be like Elijah. Many of you, I want to be like, the, let, let the spirit of Elijah, let, let it come upon me. Elijah was limited. The spirit would come upon him and he would minister. But for you, it is different. The spirit resides in you. You are better than Elijah. You are better than Elisha. You are better than David. You are better than Abraham. For they, they did not see the promise. But you, you have the promise. What they were longing for, they did not see it. The city that Abraham was hoping for, he did not see it. But as for you, you have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God. The same city that Abraham was looking for, but he did not see it. But you, you have come to that city, the new Jerusalem. They did not see. They did not have the promise. This is not the year of vengeance. This is not the year of fire. This is the year of salvation. Isaiah prophesied it. And when the book was given to Jesus, after he had said this is the year of salvation, he closed the book because it's not the year of judgment. It's not the year of fire. That fire is awaiting. It's not even for you believers. It is meant to be for the fallen angels. But for those that will reject this message, you will be part of it. That fire was not even meant for you. So when you hear people calling fire in church, I'm thinking, fire for what? 
These are doctrines of men. Winds of doctrines. It's not even a doctrine. They are winds. But anyway, that's for another day. So we don't look unto Abraham. We don't look unto David. They are not our mirror. Verse 40 shows us that looking unto Jesus, Kabadosha Tayamande, look at that. Since we God had provided something better for us, what was it that he provided that is better? Jesus is what is better. They sacrificed animals, they sacrificed gods, but Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice, that no more sacrificing of animals. Why? Because he provided something that is better. The promise that they did not see. They kept sacrificing animals. But for us, Jesus, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, was, was our ultimate sacrifice. Look at Hebrews. Look at Hebrews. I'm just building a foundation here. We'll be taking off in a few minutes. But I want you to understand this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1. Praise God. Therefore, since we have been, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse number 2. The Bible declares, look into Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, looking away from Abraham, looking away from Isaiah, looking away from Elijah, but looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we look unto Jesus. We have to look away from Elijah. You have to look away from Moses. Many of you, you are still caught up in the Moses uh, dilemma. Moses was just but a shadow. Praise God. But because you have failed to embrace knowledge, uh, ignorance will undress you in public. That's why you are still hoping and saying, this man is my Moses. A man can never be your Moses. Ignorance will undress you in public if you fail to embrace knowledge. So we look away from Moses. We look away. Listen. Am I saying Moses, Elijah, Abraham, Isaiah, and all these, we should forget them? No, we don't. They were teaching us something. We learn from them. But they are not our mirror. They are not our model. But we learn from them. There are certain things that we learn from them. But it's not every practice that we practice because they were hoping for. Remember, faith is the substance of things hopeful. They were hoping for what we have now. And there was so, a lot of misconception within the Old Testament. God is killing. God is this. God is this. That's what they thought. But Jesus then came. He said, a thief cometh not to kill. A thief cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life. Meaning I'm not the one that was killing in the Old Testament. Okay. That's for another day. So we look away from Elijah. We look away from Isaiah. We look away from Elijah, Elisha, Moses, Gideon, David, we look away from them, but we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why? Jesus is our mirror. Why? For Jesus reflects you to you. Jesus is our mirror. For the, the Bible says, why I'm saying that the scriptures, it's not everything that is, that is our mirror. Is I want you to understand, if Jesus is our mirror, watch this. John chapter 1 verse number 1. The Bible declares in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the word of God is a person. So the scriptures that they were talking about, they were talking about Christ. Was it not the Bible says in the book of John that you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are they that testify of me so the scriptures they testify of me who is me the word who is the word jesus for the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us so the scriptures they are testifying of the word the word is a person as much as the anointing is a person 
the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the scriptures, they testify of me, testifying of who? The word. So Elijah, Elisha, and, and all these guys, they were speaking of Jesus, the scriptures, though it was in shadows, types, and metaphors. So you, God gave birth to you by the word. He gave birth to you by the word. That means Jesus is your mirror. Because we have identified according to John 1.14 that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So God gave birth to you by the word. So we can, we can only learn from Elijah, Elisha's and all these. We can only learn from them. But they are not our mirror. They are not our model. They are not... Look at, okay, look at Romans chapter 8. Look at Romans chapter 8. Uh, we're just building a foundation here. Romans chapter 8, verse number 2. Praise God. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free. The law of the spirit of life has set you free. Free in Christ from all the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit has set you free in Christ Jesus. You are free from sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh and could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He... Stay there in Romans. Stay there in Romans. I want to show you something. Stay there in Romans. Romans 3. Look at Romans 3, 27. Stay there in Romans. Romans 3, 27. Then what became of our Boston? It is excluded. But what kind of law? By the law of works. No, by the law of faith. So here Paul calls it, calls it the law of faith. And that law is in Christ. Why? Because it is that law that has brought us freedom. It is in Christ. It is not in David. It is not in Elijah. It is not in Abraham. So for you to see yourself, you look into Jesus. You look where? You look into Jesus. For you to see yourself, you look into Jesus. So in the midst, Kayabo Shataya Mande, in the midst of trials, are you still here? In the midst of trials, you begin to declare that you are what the word says you are. Because you were born out of the word. You were born by the word. So anything that comes along your way, you have the word. Listen, if, if I bought um, a Mercedes, I will not, if I bought a Mercedes and it breaks down, I would not go to Toyota to start looking for parts for a Mercedes. I go back, Kobo Shataya. I go back to the manufacturer. And if you are born of the word, so if anything is not working out, what do you do? You go back to the word because you were given birth by the same word. But we have a lot of people that they are going through certain trials and tribulations and then they forget that, listen, I am Mercedes. I cannot go to Toyota to get parts for a Mercedes. So many people people trials have come their way instead of them going back to the word for the word is your mirror that they don't go to the word they go now looking for babalaos that's when you are many are deceived you gotta go back to what gave birth to you the word of god so you go back to the word and say listen certain things are not working i'm born of the word if there be any part that needs rectifying the word of god my god when trials come you go back to the word but because many people like i said mercedes you have mercedes or whatever but you are going to toyota to get parts for a mercedes they don't fit no wonder why things are not working for you. Why? And then you begin to blame God. Oh God, you have deserted me. Why God have you done this? Yet James is saying, you are deceiving yourselves because you are a hearer and not a doer of the word. You are born of the word. So you begin to declare, I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I have what the word says I, I have. So you ought to know what the word is saying concerning your life for you to make declarations. 
No matter what, no matter the trials, no matter the challenges, I still stand and say I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I have what the word says I can do. So I, I refuse to be defined by my circumstances. Refuse to be defined by the circumstances that you are going through. For the word of God is your reality no matter what people say. Look at the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah 53 verse number 1. The prophecy that Isaiah gave. He say he declares whose report shall you believe? So I refuse to be defined by my circumstances. I might be going through a season of affliction. But that affliction cannot define who I am. Because I choose not to believe that report. Because I know the report I have believed. I have looked in the mirror. And what I have seen while I looked in the mirror. I saw Christ Jesus. And when I I saw Christ Jesus I began to see myself in Christ because he gave birth to me by the word whose report shall you believe what mirror are you looking at Isaiah prophesied it whose report shall you believe so you are not defined, Alabosha. You are not defined by your circumstances. You are not defined by your dreams. Many of you, you are caught up in a, in a situation whereby you think like any, nothing is working out because you found yourself in a dream being chased by some whatever. And you have defined yourself. And say, oh, my life will not work because I saw myself being chased by this. I saw myself doing this. I saw myself. You are not defined by your dreams. You are not defined by your visions. You are not defined by your experiences. You are not defined by your ex ex circumstances. You are defined by the word. Because he gave birth to you by the word. He made you the first fruits. Kind of first fruits. So you are not defined by circumstances you are not defined because you are not married they've defined you this one will not get married you are not pregnant yet they say this one is barren ah your circumstance will not define who you are i know who i am i look in the mirror what do I see when I look in the mirror? I look I see Christ and when I see Christ who do I'm who am I seeing I'm seeing myself because what is in Christ is what is in me so you go back to the word Stop running up and down. You are running. This is why you end up eating grass. Most of you. Obvious, not you that are watching. Many people, you end up eating grass because how can you take. Oh, Shalbara Sagisha Lamandia. How can you take a, a spare part from a Toyota, a, the, a, the, the engine of a Toyota, and try to put it in, in, a, in a Mercedes? You take it back to the original manufacturer. But because you have failed to do that, like I said, if you fail to embrace knowledge, ignorance will undress you in public. Then we begin to see you eating grass. Are you born of grass? Yeah. Eating grass, eating salt, eating stones, putting stones under your tongue. Hey, hey, hey. Shine your eyes. You go back to the manufacturer. You go back to the manufacturer. Your life is not defined by visions, dreams, and whatever. It's not. Remember the Bible in the book of Philemon, chapter number one, verse number six. The Bible says, let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective, impactful by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So your faith becomes effective when you acknowledge what is in Christ. Remember, what is in Christ is what is in you. So your faith becomes effectual, effective, impactful by acknowledging what is in you in Christ Jesus. So you keep acknowledging every day, not just on Bible studies, not just here on a Sunday broadcast, not just when a prophet is, Angela is, is preaching, not that when, no, you acknowledge it every single day of your life. 
you wake up you begin to acknowledge what is in christ is in you what is in me is what is in christ you begin you acknowledge that every day you acknowledge that every day it's not just on a friday it's not just most of us we become spiritual on a sunday we become spiritual on a friday we become spiritual when we have service but you ought to be acknowledging this why for your faith to become effective let the sharing of your faith become effective by acknowledging every good thing watch this every good thing that is in you in christ jesus so that means you are loaded with good things ah i said you are loaded with good things why because every good thing is in christ and whatever is in christ it is in you so you acknowledge you acknowledge joshua said joshua said do not let this book of the lord depart from your mouth do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. That your ways may be prosperous. And most of you, you don't like the word. Ah, people don't like the word. They just want, pray, pray for me. Anoint me. Just pour oil. Just, you don't like the word. But when you know the word, when you fall in love with the word, you begin to understand that when John was the first John, when he says the anointing that you received abides in you forever, you begin to understand that the anointing is not a bottle. The anointing is a person and that person resides in you. When you begin to understand, when you fall in love with the word, oh, Masagi, do, do not let the word depart from your mouth every day. Why? Because the word of God is your mirror. For you to know you, you ought to know the word because you are born of the word. You can't go on vacation from the word. Say that ah, today I'm relaxing. Ah, not today. You can't go on vacation. Why? Because the enemy is roaring like a lion looking for whom to devour. The enemy will not go on rest, will not go on holiday. He is constantly looking for whom to devour. But I'm here to declare and to decree. No matter where the enemy is roaring like a lion looking for whom to devour, but they will not catch you. I say they will not catch you. Because you're not ignorant. And then 1 John, 1 uh, Peter, 1 Peter chapter, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, it says what? Be alert and be sober minded. Be sober. Be alert and be sober. Why? For your enemy, the devil, prows like a roaring lion, looking for whom to devour. So if you stay away from the word, you are not sober. And the Bible then says, resist the devil, resist him, and he will flee. So that means, don't give him room. That means you can give him room. You can give him room. But it says, resist him. And he will flee. He says, pray without season. Pray without season. For Satan is working. The enemy is working. And you, you are you're re relaxing. Pray without season. So you keep looking at the mirror. You keep looking at the mirror. When you keep looking at the mirror, you begin to see yourself now. Are you ready? We are about to take off. Get ready. Fasten your seatbelts. Okay? Oh. All right? Okie dokie. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 17. Oh, we are about to take off now. Yeah. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 17 to 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in knowledge of him. Why in knowledge of him? Because when you know him, you know you. As he is, so are we. So for me to know me, I have to know him. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? Key word there is in knowledge of him. Because when you know him, you know you. Many of you, you don't even know. Oh, I don't know. Man of God, tell me, what is God saying concerning my life? Um, 
uh, I don't know if God called me or not. Uh -huh. No problem. Here is an open prophecy for you. When you know him, you will know you. Why? The same burden, that is in him is the same that is in you. Number one, Timothy says what? For it is the will of the Father that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So your first calling is for you to preach the gospel that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So, you don't know your calling. Now you know. You don't know it. Ah, what you need to do is know him. When you know him, you will know you. Because as he is, so are we. So the key word there is in the knowledge of him. Why? When you know him, you will know you. Look at verse 18 of that same book. Look at verse 18. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know. That you may know. Again, know. That word know is the same word epignosis comprehensive insight accurate precise knowledge that you may know why do you have to know him because he is your mirror so when you look at yourself in the mirror prophetess angela when you look at yourself in the mirror what are you seeing you gotta see christ reflected when you come to a place of knowledge in anything that you shall do you will begin to understand that's why the bible would say they that know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits if you want to do exploits just know him because when you know him you will know you what he can do you can do what is in him is in you if jesus went about doing good healing all kinds of sicknesses and disease you too you have the same ability. But you don't know it because you don't know him. So you ought to know him for you to know you. Why? Because he is your mirror. When you look in the mirror, what are you seeing? You can't, I can't go and stand in the mirror and then I start seeing my wife. I don't see my wife in the mirror. I should see me in the mirror. But if you start seeing your wife or someone else in the mirror other than you, just know that there is a problem. So when I go and I look in the mirror, what should I see? I should see Christ. Christ is reflecting me. That you may know. I want you to remember something. That the word of God is the message of the scriptures. The word of God is the message of the scriptures. Why do I say that? Look again. Okay. Let me give you scripture and then we, 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 we flow. The word of God is the word of God is the message of the scriptures. Why? Look at John chapter 5. I'll give you scriptures. I'll, I'll just give you scripture. John chapter 5 verse 39. The Bible says you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is they that bear witness about me. So the scriptures, the scriptures, the, the, the word of God is the message of the scriptures. For they testify of me. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they that testify of me. And you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Meaning, the scriptures, they expose your mirror. Like I said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Verse 14, the word became flesh. So the scriptures, they, they expose you. They expose you. Are you still here with me? The word is a person. He became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the scriptures, they testify of the word. So by reason of the spirit of adoption, we cry, Abba, Father. That is our only reflected mirror. That is the word. Look at 2 Corinthians. Look at 2 Corinthians. I want to show you something. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The Bible says what? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and old things have become new. Put away. So, what, what, what is happening? With the mirror now, with the mirror now, you put away the old. 
and put on the new. You put away the old and put on the new. The Bible says all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things. When the Bible says all things, it means all things have passed away. So you put away the old mirror. What is the old mirror? Maso baria do jalamani. Lengro si agu jalaba ati a barenia nondre dia suj kaladi bere sad kinendra suja ladia berenia sutali kipara suja. What is the old mirror? The old mirror is the mirror of condemnation. Alebo shatama. So you're saying put on the new mirror. When you look at the new mirror, for if any man be in Christ, kaya bo shataya mandera bosha. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you put away the old mirror of condemnation. For there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. You put away the old mirror of sickness. Because when I look in the mirror, I ought not to seek sickness. Because sickness cannot be found in Christ. If it cannot be found in Christ, it cannot be found in me. So I put away the old mirror. The mirror that I was looking at. I was condemning myself. The mirror I was looking at. I was seeing sickness. The mirror I was looking at. I was seeing failure. The mirror I was looking at. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So I put away the old mirror. Now there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So the old mirror of condemnation, I have put it away. The old mirror of failure, I have put it away. The old mirror of sickness, I have put it away. Are you still here? Praise God. Thank God you are still here. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 10. Masa baradia gujalahadia. Membroskia dohosha. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 10. Are you still here? I told you we are about to flow and we are flowing now. Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 10. The Bible then declares and says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are what? We are are his workmanship created in God created in Christ rather so the new girl Borasigiadosha Lamahandia Zinga Batosha the new girl has been created in Christ Jesus that means everything that was used to create girl it is in Christ Jesus there was nothing that was created there was nothing that was used on girl and aside from the word of God so anything that was used to create temple Kebo Shataya it was in Christ it is found in Christ you are his workmanship, created way in Christ Jesus. So everything that was used to assemble you, everything that was used to assemble you, to put you together, it was in Christ Jesus through the word. So that means if anything is not working out, you go back to the manual, you go back to the word because you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Don't get me preaching now. Created in Christ Jesus. Not only were you created in Christ Jesus, but created in Christ Jesus for good works. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but maybe maybe this message is for Nelson Temple. The Bible declares, Nelson Temple, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So if you were created in Christ Jesus, anything else that is not found in Christ cannot be found in you. I declare and I decree anything that has been any affliction that has been tormenting you that is not found in Christ cannot be found in you. You have every right to reject it in the name of Jesus. And you have a stand where you stand. You stand on the word said, Father, for it is written. Be, remember, he said, I am your God. I change not. I am not man that would lie, no son of man that would repent, whatever that I said. So if you go back to the manual and say, Father, it is written, you said this in your word, you are not man that you would lie. You stand on that without wavering. You will see the manifestation. You are his workmanship created in Christ. So everything concerning whatever it is, it was in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are in Christ. Created in Christ. Not only were you created in Christ, but created in Christ for good works. 
I don't know this message is for who, but it is for good works. Oh, Shatala Manderebosha, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's your mirror. That's your mirror. No one can reveal you to you than you. Bosha Taya Manderebosha. God had to reveal himself to us through himself by which it corrects and erases all manner of assumptions. Now let's look at, at your new identity. Let's look at your new identity. I'll just paraphrase your new identity. Let go, Bosha. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but here is your new identity. Ali Gabazia. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number two. Ephesians chapter one, verse number two. Let's look at your new identity. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm speaking to somebody. I am bringing your new identity. The miracle that reflects you. Legabasia do Jalamandia. Grace to you. Ephesians chapter one, verse number two. Grace to you and peace from our God, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but the Bible declares you have been blessed already with every spiritual blessing. That means the gift of prophecy, it is in you. The gift of working of miracles, it is in you. The gift of faith, it is in you. Every spiritual gift, it is in you. The Bible declares it. This is your new identity because you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Because of that, he is, he is saying, I have blessed you you are blessed already so you don't need to say oh I, I pray that god give me the gift the gift of prophecy give me the gift of interpretation give me the gift of working of miracles give me that's just ignorance the bible declares it said blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed you in christ jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him oh you are chosen i don't know who i'm speaking to but you are chosen whether the world might reject you listen they will reject you because you are not of this world that that is the same thing that uh, if you try to put a part of a, a mercedes a part of a toyota in a mercedes it will reject it it will not fit in you are in this world but not of the world the world might reject you but i'm here to announce to you but you are chosen he chose you he chose you oh shagataya mandir he chose you no matter what the mistakes you have made in the past he chose you still while you were yet while we were yet sinners christ died he chose you like shataya mandir Linga bazia dosha. Watch this. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Ale bosha. You are holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons. You are a son of God, not a grandchild, not a stepson. You are a son. Adoption according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. Blessed us in in the beloved in him we have in him we have redemption oh you are we have been redeemed we have redemption through his blood we have been forgiven the forgiveness of sins you have been forgiven no matter what they will try and bring your past just tell them i don't live there anymore ask saul on his uh, soul of tarsus after he had been killing people in the church and then after he had an encounter with the word he went back to the same people and he said receive us for we have done you no harm and they said are you not the same guy are you not the same guy that has made me to become a, an orphan are you not the same guy that has made me to become a widow and he says hey behold it is not i that was Saul of Tarsus. This is Apostle Paul. Kabaso Talamanderebon. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. No matter the mistakes you have made, I am here to declare and to decree over your life. Don't let anybody, not any circumstance, define you. You are chosen. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. Alebo Shatalamanderebasi. That means the only good things, only good things, only good things are in you. I declare only good things are in you in Christ Jesus. Only good things are in you in Christ Jesus.
Are you still here with me? So when you look in that mirror, you see yourself free. I am free from sickness. I look in the mirror. I am free from sickness. I am free from bondage. I am free from any affliction. I am free because the Son of Man has set me free. So I look in the mirror. I see myself free. I see myself free. I see myself free. I look in the mirror. I see myself free. No matter the past mistakes I have made, I don't care of the, my past because a believer has got no past. A believer has only got a future. And your future is brighter and brighter and brighter. Your future is brighter. Your future is brighter. I'm here to declare your future is brighter. When you look in that mirror, you look in that mirror, you will not see sickness. You look in that mirror, you will not see kibarodia. You will not see sin. You look in that mirror, you will not see like why. <laughs> that says the spirit of the Lord unto you. You have been set free. You have been set free. The mirror that you are looking, the mirror that you are using to see yourself, it has to be the word of God. Because you are created in Christ by the word. You are born of the word. No sigi abadosia. Okay, like I said, we're gonna give you a lot of scripture. It's healthy for you. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Kabasusha, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter number two, oh, chapter three, rather, verse number 18. Oh, I'm about to say something right here. Are you ready for me? Are you ready for this? I'm about to say something. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter number three, verse number eighteen. This mirror. Oh la di biasuja. The Bible says, and we we and we all with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is spirit. You are being transformed from one glory to another. So what is it that I'm doing today? I have brought the mirror to you. I have brought the mirror to you. So what, what are you ought to do? What are you meant to do? I bring the mirror to you. All you need to do is you look into the mirror and you begin to adjust. <laughs> because you have to be going from glory to glory. You are going from glory to glory. So I bring the mirror to you, the word of God. So you, you look at the word of God, you begin to adjust. And all we, with unveiled faces, Kabadoja, are being transformed into the same image. So the, the, the process of being transformed is taking place right now as I'm giving you the mirror. Because you're looking at yourself in the mirror. It's the same thing with women. I don't know. It's the same thing with women. You would go on the mirror and when you begin to see something there, you adjust you begin to make it right. You adjust. You begin to make it right. And then when you have adjusted, if you see something again, you adjust. So what am I doing? I bring the word of God. The word of God is your mirror. So when I bring the word of God, you begin to see that by his stripes I'm healed. So that means sickness that is in my body. Oh, I need to adjust. Sickness leave. Oh, I'm looking in the mirror again. I see there's a lot of shame in my life. And then I see the word of God that he took away my shame. Oh, Barasia Doja. They that look unto him are radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. Ah, I reject shame. So I'm giving you the word of God, the mirror. You adjust. You begin to adjust. You begin to adjust. You begin to adjust. Mm. This is what the word says concerning my life. Ooh, I adjust. So as I bring to you the mirror, you begin, your life is being transformed right now. It's being transformed right now as you are adjusting from glory to glory. As you look into that mirror, you adjust. And Jesus is our mirror. Look at the Bible in the book of John. How, how is it? How do you do that? How do you adjust? Watch this. John. No, Joshua rather. Look at Joshua. Look at Joshua again. Look at Joshua again. Oh, Gabasia, Dojala, Mahandere, Bosia. 
Joshua. Look at Joshua again. Joshua 1 verse number 8. The Bible says what? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For when you will make, for then you will make your way prosperous. Is that how you make your way prosperous? Yes, it is. You go in the mirror. You begin to see yourself. You begin to know, okay, I know who I am. I know whose I am. You begin to see yourself in the mirror. Like, yes. Mm. No, that's not it. Oh, no, no, no. I need to adjust. So I, I adjust. I adjust. Ah, no, I adjust. But if you don't have a mirror, you cannot adjust. You will be told all manner of nonsense, all winds of doctrine. That you need, to, for, you need to sow a seed for deliverance. You need to sow a seed for redemption. You need to sow a seed for this. <laughs> because you have no mirror. The mirror you begin to understand that Jesus paid the price. Once and for all. I've been redeemed. I've been justified. I've been sanctified. Mm. By his stripes I am healed. I adjust. So how do you adjust meditating on the word? The word, that is your mirror. Okay, let me give an example. I know my wife is going to skin me alive, but it's the truth. Please don't tell my wife I'm saying this now. I know she, I hope she's not watching. I don't know. Please don't tell her. I'm, I'm, the secret is out now. The secret, I think my wife and prophetess Angel, Angela, they will understand these things. And uh, Gail, they'll understand. I don't know who else is here. Where? Let me see. Who else is here? Where, 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 where? Uh, and uh, come, come, Jot, and they will understand what I'm about to say. So we are talking about Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Yeah? Whereby he said, meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Day and night. I tell my wife that uh, we need to go out. Mama, we need to go out. We are going out. We are going for something. Get ready. She's, she's in the bathroom. She's finished preparing. Before she even gets to the bedroom, she's already on... <clears throat> Please don't tell my wife this. Hey, yeah. I think uh, uh, Apostle Roderick can, can attest, uh, you know, to what I'm saying. Then she, she... Because we're talking of Joshua chapter 1, meditate day and night. Don't leave the mirror. Don't leave the mirror. <laughs> the word of God. So she goes in the bathroom. She finishes whatever. She goes in the bedroom, mirror. She's on the mirror. And she will be adjusting. Say, baby, we need to go time. And then, okay, okay, on her way out from the bedroom, she'll pass through another bedroom. There's another mirror there. She'll be like, to just make sure. You understand why I'm saying that the word of God, Joshua says, meditate on it day and night. Because it is the mirror, what you see. We finished there. She's passed through the, the other bedroom. Ha! Mama, we need to go. No problem. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Begs, begs in. Boom! We get into the car. You know that thing, the, what you call it? That we sun blocker. We have not even left. The car is idling. We're getting ready to go. You've been in the mirror in the bathroom, the mirror in the bedroom, and then you come back. Now we're in the car, and then it's that mirror. She begins to adjust again. She begins to adjust. Hey! And then, as we are going, as we are going, and that thing is put back, hey, you will see the, you see the fingerprints, there are fingerprints there, with makeup, you will see that madame has been here. As soon as we get to where we are going, the next thing, the first thing that she does, bathroom. She's in the bathroom. Making sure that it's all intact. On her way from the bathroom, she sits in that place where we are saying, okay, we are here. There is now another handbag, a small, a small thingy, a small little mirror. Again, it's opened. Ay! <laughs> mirror from there, mirror from there, mirror from there. This is what Joshua is saying. Joshua is saying, let the word of God not depart from you. Meditate on it day and night. So if you can, because you are checking yourself in the mirror, because you need to adjust. So what I'm doing right now, I'm giving you the word of God for you to adjust. Anything that you begin to see that is not meant to be on you, you adjust. 
The same way that she would use the mirror in here, mirror in there, everywhere where she goes, there ought to be a mirror because I need to adjust. So everywhere that you go, everything that you do, you ought to have the word of God for it is your mirror. Now look at Hebrews. I mean, Kalibazi Azusha Lamandia. Look at Ali Gabarodi Asuja. So I look in that mirror. I look in that mirror. Oh, Shaka Talaman. I look in that mirror and I see, baby, I see his body. I see Jesus' body. And then what am I seeing when I'm seeing the body of Jesus? I see the stripes. He says, by his stripes I am healed. So I have a right to healing. I declare and I decree. Anybody that was trusting God for healing. As I bring this mirror, I am here to announce you have a right to healing because his body was broken for you. Many don't look at the mirror. So when you don't look at the mirror, look at, look at what 1 Corinthians says. If you don't look at the mirror, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 30. 1 Corinthians 11 30. If you don't look at the mirror, this is what happens. This is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Why? You, not looking in the mirror. You got to look in the mirror. So women, if you can have five mirrors, one in your, and then if the one is missing and you, I've seen you, you ladies, I've seen you, you use your, your phone, your phone as a camera, you know that camera, you'll be like pretending to be doing something and uh, no, you're not, we know you, you are looking at, uh, you know, you, you put a camera, you put a camera on, like you, you're doing something, but the camera is just you adjusting. You are just in constantly the same thing that J Joshua is saying. Meditate on this word. So because of this, many are weak and sick because they have failed to look at the mirror. Why? You look in the mirror and you see the body is broken for you. Sickness cannot glorify the body. So sickness ought to live. I look in that mirror. So I'm bringing the mirror right now. So I declare and I decree. You will reign in this life in the name of Jesus. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You are you're above not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. So when I bring the mirror to you, when you see yourself in the mirror, you ought to see Christ. Because remember, you are his workmanship created in Christ for good works. So every part of you, Christ, you were created in Christ. So everything that you need, every spare part, whatever spare part that you need, it is in Christ. So when you look in the mirror, I'm about to finish now. But when you look in that mirror, what am I seeing now? I stand there and I look in the mirror. What am I seeing? I am seeing that I'm justified. I am seeing that I'm accepted. I am seeing that I'm qualified. I am seeing that I'm chosen. I am seeing that I am, I am anointed. I am seeing that there are no more limits, limitations. I am seeing myself. There is no more stagnation in my life. Because if stagnation cannot be found in Jesus, if lack cannot be found in Jesus, if sickness cannot be found in Jesus, and Jesus is my mirror. So when I look at myself in the mirror, and if I see sickness here, I begin to adjust according to the mirror. The mirror, the word of God. Look at John. Look at First John. I want to say something here and then we close. Look at First John. I'm going to... Oh, Jabagada. Get ready for this. This you are not expecting it. I know. But get ready. I'm giving you the mirror. You adjust. Begin to adjust. First John. Praise God. Are you here? First John chapter 4. Verse 4 to 6. First John 4. 4, 6. The Bible says, little children, you are from God. Remember, you are born of the word. Little children, you are of God. And have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not of God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. For the Bible says, for you err, for you know not the scriptures. You are of God, little children. You are born of God. Ah. So if the Bible is saying, like I said, I'm about to say something. 
So if the Bible is saying you are of God, little children, you are of God, little children, you are of God, created in Christ. Corinthians says, if any man be in Christ, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if he says you are of God, little children, that means you don't have a long list of generations. It is just you and God. Stay with me. I'm about to correct something. There is no, so you don't have a long list of generations. It's just God and yourself. Okay? Stay there in 1 John. But let's go to 1 John chapter 5 now. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 5 verse number 4. 1 John 5 verse 4. The Bible says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So that means your father is God. You are not a grandchild. You are not a grandchild. You are not a stepson. Your father is God. So your genealogy is not long. Your genealogy is not long. Meaning what is in God is what is in you. Remember James chapter 1 verse 18. It says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. That we should be, watch this, please listen to the words. That we should be a kind of first fruits. We should be a kind of first fruits. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word. That means you are born of the word. That means anything that needs rectifying in your life, you go back to the word. Because you are born of the word. Now, pay attention to these two words I'm about to say. Because with what I'm about to say, oh, you, you, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you might not be able to contain it. He says... <clears throat> Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. That we should be, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That word, word of truth is the same word as sperma, meaning DNA. That means you have the DNA of God. You have the DNA of Christ, rather, right? You share the same DNA with God. So when you, when you share the same DNA with God, that means your generation is God than you. You don't have a long genealogy. Okay. So when anyone now begins to tell you about generational cases, It's fraud. For, please stay, listen to me. For a believer, there's no generational case. A non-believer, there's generational cases. A believer, there's no generational case. A non-believer, there's generational cases. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So a believer has got no generational case. It doesn't matter that it has been said by people that have gone ahead of us. It doesn't matter that it has been said by so many people. It does not matter. As long as it's not biblical, it's not truth. So many of you, you're looking in the mirror, my God. And the mirror you are being told that you have a generational case. That's why things are not working. That's why this is not working. And you are a believer. 
A believer, there's no generational curse. A non-believer, yes, they are. Remember, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. That is deliverance. The movement from one kingdom to another. So, for believers, there is no generational case. The day that you were born again, you disconnected yourself. If you are not born again, you are connected to generational cases, altars, whatever, all those things. Those are for unbelievers, not for believers. Look at First Peter. Look at First Peter. Look at First Peter. Look at First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter 2, 9. The Bible says, but you are chosen, huh? but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession. If, if you are a people of his own possession, how is it that you will have a generational case? How can you have a generational case? You are of his own possession that you may proclaim his excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How then can you have a generational case? My beloved, as I bring this mirror to you, as I bring this mirror to you, my God, let me, let me just say this prophetic word. Let me just say this prophetic word. As I bring this mirror to you, you have been looking in the mirror and you have been condemning yourself because of your past mistakes. The things that you have done in the past, you are told that because of what you have done in the past, it's catching up with you, you know, and this. Listen, for believers, there's no karma. If there was karma, Paul would have said, from Saul to Paul, there was no karma. A believer, there's no karma because a believer has got no past. If you are born again, you have no past, but you only have a future. So I'm here to declare to somebody. I, I want to speak. Let, allow me to speak to somebody. Allow me to speak to somebody right now. It doesn't matter the past mistakes that you have done. It doesn't matter what you have done before. It doesn't matter the mistakes that you have done before. I am here to bring the mirror to you, the word of God. And the mirror tells me that you have been forgiven. The mirror tells me that you have been justified. The mirror tells me that you have been accepted in the beloved. The mirror says that you have been acquitted. The mirror says that you have been redeemed. The mirror says that you have been washed. It doesn't matter the mistakes. Many of you right now, as I'm speaking right now, you are going through seasons of certain trials that are credited to your past because you are told because you did this in the past you did this in the past this is why you're going through this you did this in the past i am here to bring to you this mirror the bible says there is now no condemnation to those that are in christ jesus my beloved i just want you to believe the word of god I am giving you the word of God. I am giving you the mirror. You need to just adjust. The word declares you have been forgiven. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. It doesn't matter the mistakes you have done. It doesn't matter what you have gone through in the past. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you are born again. Behold, all things have become new. All things have passed away. Don't condemn yourself. You have been condemning yourself. You're, you're going through seasons and you, you condemn yourself. Maybe it's because of what I did. Maybe it's because of what I said. Maybe it's because of what I... Maybe it's because of this. I am here to announce to you. It is not because of that. Today I bring the mirror to you. No matter your past. No matter what you have done. No matter how ugly it looks, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how smelly it smells, it doesn't matter. If it wasn't so, Jesus would not have died. His death would have been in vain. 
But while he was on the cross, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of your past mistakes. He was saying, how can I rectify the mistakes that my children have done? How can I rectify the mistakes that my sons have done? How can I rectify the mistakes of my children? While he was on the cross, he was thinking of you, saying, how can I rectify it? And then he said, there is only one way that I can rectify it. I will die. And on the third day, I will rise again. And upon my resurrection, their sins are forgiven. It is only the enemy that will remind you of the things that the Lord does not remember. Your sins are forgiven. Whatever mistakes you have done in the past, that you think that things are not working because of that, I bring this mirror to you and I want you to adjust. I want you to begin to adjust according to this mirror, the word of God. You have been accepted. You have been justified. You have been forgiven. No matter what, you have been forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Oh my God, you are forgiven. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that is watching right now. No matter the mistakes that they have made in the past, no matter the mistakes that you have done in the past, maybe you have made a wrong move in regards to your relationship. Now you are not getting married. You are thinking it's because of what you did in the past. I am here to bring this mirror to you, to tell you that if you are born again, you have no past, but you have a future. And that future, I'm here to declare that it is brighter. No matter what you have done before, you have been accepted, you have been justified in the name of Jesus. You are the redeemed of the Lord. I declare and I decree. As I bring this mirror before you, begin to adjust. Sickness in your body, you look in the mirror. You find out it's not found in Christ. Whatever that is not found in Christ should not be found in you. I declare and I decree every sickness, let it leave your body now. As you look in the mirror, I declare and I decree, let that sickness go in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever affliction of the enemy, for the Bible declares, for many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. No matter the past mistakes, no matter how dark it was, I am here to announce to you, as I bring this mirror before you, the word of God, I declare that your past mistakes have been forgiven. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. There is no more condemnation. Don't condemn yourself for the past mistakes. Don't condemn yourself for the failures that you made. Don't condemn yourself for the marriage that did not work. Don't condemn yourself. But I'm here to announce to you that behold, all things are new. I declare that in this season you will reign in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that everybody that is watching, Lord, as I bring this mirror before them. Father, I thank you because they have been accepted. I thank you because they have been qualified. I thank you because, Father, you have chosen them. I thank you, Lord, because you have anointed them. I declare no more limitations in your life. I declare no more barrenness in your life. I declare no more generational cases for a believer. There is nothing like that. I declare it so in the mighty name of Jesus. No more stagnation. No more struggling. As I bring this mirror, you begin to adjust. In the name of Jesus. Maybe somebody you are watching this broadcast. Maybe you have not received life. I want to give you this opportunity. I cannot go without giving you this opportunity. I want to give you this opportunity. I want to give you this opportunity to receive life. Today is your day of salvation. This is the year of salvation, for this is the will of the Father, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. I want to give somebody an opportunity right now. And just pray this prayer with me that you may receive life. 
I want you to understand that for God so loved you so much, so much, so much that he gave his only begotten son. That if you will believe in him, you would not perish but have eternal life. My beloved, what would you benefit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? I want to give you this opportunity to receive life. And if you're there and you're saying, ah, this is my day, I want to receive life. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you, oh God, for you died because of me. You were buried because of me. And you rose again on the third day because of me. Father, I thank you because it was on the cross you were thinking of me. Father, I thank you even when blood was gushing out of your body, you were thinking of me. What manner of love is this, O oh God, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Father, today I believe that you are the Son of God. You are my Savior. Today I receive life. I accept you as my personal Savior. Lord, I open my spirit. Take over, Lord. Take authority. Come into my life that I may have life. Today I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that I am born again. And behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that I have received life. And I thank you that I am born again. And I thank you that, Lord, you have, my sins are forgiven. And I thank you, Lord, that you have accepted me. And I thank you, Lord, that you have accepted me. I thank you, Lord. Today I receive life. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I've prayed. Listen, if you have just prayed that simple prayer, you have received life. I encourage you to go to a Bible-believing church that is near where you are. And uh, I truly believe that you need to be going through the Word of God that you may grow, that you may begin to grow. Praise God. My beloved, I'm so excited and I'm so excited um, for those that have just um, received life. It gives me so much joy. I'm so excited. But as for you, this is the mirror that I bring to you. The word of God is your mirror. Begin to adjust. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at and see what the word says concerning your life. If anything is contrary to what the word says, put it in the bin. Adjust. That's why the mirror is there. You adjust. If you put too much makeup or too much whatever, women, you adjust. You don't just put makeup and then you just go. No, you look at yourself. You adjust. So you look at your life and you see what the word says concerning your life. If it is contrary to what the word says, throw it in the bin. Don't be deceived by doctrines of men. For they have made the word of God of none effect. They'll say, no, you, this is what you have to... No, no, no. If it is not in alignment with the scriptures, put it in the bin. That's why we bring the mirror that you adjust. My beloved, from me, it is shalom. I believe that you have been blessed. And uh, I declare and I decree. May you have a glorious week ahead of you. Every door that was closed, may it begin to open. Every opportunity that you missed before, may it be brought back to you in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree, your going out is blessed, your coming in is blessed. You are blessed, you are not cursed. You are chosen, you are accepted, you are accepted in the beloved. You have been anointed. I declare no lack, no sickness, no stagnation in the name of Jesus. Any barrier, I declare and I decree, may the God of grace... Give you strength to leap over it. May the God of grace give you strength to climb over every mountain. The Bible declares that after you have suffered a little while, I, the God of grace, 
I will establish you. I declare, may you be established in this coming week. He said, I will settle you. May you be settled in this coming week in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever that was not working, may it begin to work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your eyes of understanding have been enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. My beloved, from me, it is shalom. God bless you. Love you so much. God bless you. Shall he back.